Hi everyone, it's Teacher Janelle. I hope you're having a great day. I'm sitting outside in my backyard again, and I'm using my five senses. I'm going to be quiet for a second and see if you can hear anything. If you hear some chirping, I wanted to let you know the exciting news that the baby birds have come back to our backyard. I'm going to turn my computer so you can see where their house is. Hold on. If you remember in a video I taped earlier, I talked about how some baby birds every year live in our backyard. And if you can see, that's their house. And over the last few days, we've been hearing a lot of chirping coming from that house, which means that there are probably a lot of baby birds there. Listening to those baby birds got me thinking more about my five senses. And today, I want to talk about the sense of touch. In our world around us, there are a lot of different things that we can touch. Some things might be sharp. Some things might be soft. And some things might be smooth. So, I thought I could see what I would find in my backyard that would be one of those categories. Next to me right here, I have a special kind of plant. I'm going to move my computer so you can see it. Does anybody know what that is? If you said a cactus, you were right. That's a cactus that I grew in this old pot. The cactus is sharp in some places, but it can be soft in other places. So I would say, for the most part, the cactus is sharp. You don't want to run into a cactus or fall into a cactus. It might hurt you. Also, in my garden are some rocks. I talked about rocks in a different video that I did, but I would say rocks are, what do you think? I would say that rocks are smooth. Some rocks, if they're broken, can be sharp, but the rocks that I found in my backyard are smooth. I have something else wandering around in my backyard. Does anybody remember our school guinea pig, Cinnamon? Cinnamon doesn't live in our backyard, but I thought I would bring Cinnamon out today just to say hello. Cinnamon is very soft. You can see her up close. She's got very, very, very soft fur. So I would say Cinnamon is soft. But there's part of cinnamon that is sharp. And those are her claws or her nails. They, they're sharp and they actually have scratched me before. Not on purpose, but her claws are sharp. So like we've learned, things can have more than one characteristic. Today, I want to read a story about touch. And it's called, Nobody Hugs a Cactus. Remember how we talked about how cactuses are pretty sharp? Let's see what this story has to tell us about that. Hank lived in a pot. The pot sat in a window. The window looked at the empty desert. It was hot, dry, peaceful, and quiet. Just the way Hank liked it. It's pretty peaceful and quiet right now in my backyard. But every now and then, somebody would interrupt Hank's peace and quiet. Hi, Hank, Rosie the tumbleweed called out. Isn't it a beautiful day? Hank ignored her. 
He just wanted to be left alone. Okay, so long, said Rosie cheerfully, and she tumbled away. Hank was happy again. But just as he was beginning to relax, hello, shouted a, a tortoise. Good reading. Private property, yelled Hank. Keep out. The tortoise was so frightened, he hid in his shell. Hank was still yelling at the tortoise when a jackrabbit dashed by. Hiya, Prickles, she shouted. My name isn't Prickles, said Hank, yelled back and stay out of my yard. Tumbleweed, tortoise, jackrabbits. What's next, said Hank. A coyote came lopping by. No dogs allowed, Hank yelled. I'm not a dog, said the coyote, and you are as prickly on the inside as you are on the outside. Hmm. I want you to take a look at our cactus friend. He looks very angry. I wonder if his feelings will change by the time we get to the end of our story. Sometimes that happens. Before Hank could yell back at the coyote, Cowboy strode past. Keep off the grass, shouted Hank. What grass, said the coyote. Seems to me somebody needs a hug. Too bad nobody hugs a cactus. Hi, said a lizard. Who invited you, said Hank. And just in case you're wondering, I don't want a hug. That's good, said the lizard, because I don't want to give you one. Then he skittered away. Hmm. An owl landed on the roof. If you're looking for a hug, said Frank, well, I guess I could give you one. Hmm. That's an interesting response. Who me, said the owl. You must be joking. And for the first time, Hank began to feel a little lonely. Hmm. The next morning, Hank was feeling more sad on the inside than prickly. Maybe a hug wouldn't be so bad after all. I thought his feelings might change. He went from being really prickly and angry to being a little bit sad. I know my feelings change sometimes during the day and I'm sure yours do too. The wind began to pick up. An old cup blew by and stuck to Hank's face. His arms were too short to get it off. Great, said Hank. Hmm. After a while, Rosie came bouncing by again. Do you remember who Rosie was? She was the tumbleweed at the beginning of our story. I'll get it off you, Hank, she shouted, and she jumped up to knock the cup off of Hank's face. Then she tumbled away. Hank didn't have time to thank Rosie. He felt bad about all the other times he had been so rude to her. So he came up with a plan. Does anybody know what his plan might be? 
It's fun in stories to predict what happens next. Hank decided to grow the best flower he could and then give it to Rosie as a thank you gift. It took days, but at last it was ready. He couldn't wait for Rosie to pass by again. When at last she finally did come bouncing back, Hank held out the flower. Look, Rosie, he said, I grew it just for you. Rosie was so surprised, she jumped up and gave Hank a great big hug. It felt so nice. Hank didn't want to let go. And as things turned out, he couldn't. Rosie and Hank had become stuck together. But they didn't care. After all, it's better to be stuck in a hug than stuck all alone. The end. Teacher Janelle sure misses hugging you at school, but I'm really glad that you have people in your life that can be giving you hugs at home. And I just want to remind you that it's okay that your feelings change during the day. I know mine do, but it's important to talk to the people that we love in our family about how our feelings change. I really enjoyed recording this video for you, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.